Hello. Um, so I've just found out some pretty cool stuff about meta sounds that I wanted to share with you immediately. Um, there are lots of forums asking about having multiple attenuations in meta sounds, which currently it doesn't support the attenuation, uh, so to speak. But there are ways to get the distance parameter to work more closely uh, as you would expect an attenuation to work. I'm going to do a longer video about this weapons tales shared meta sound that I'm working on. But whilst working on it, I needed some weapon tails, basically some of these samples to be falling off at different speeds. So first of all, I spoke to some very clever engineers and they showed me how to make a logarithmic curve. So we have our distance parameter here. You have to add that from your UE interfaces, add interface, then you go to attenuation, make sure that's in there, and you will get your distance variable, which is this. I have my distance set to, I think it's between, yeah, uh, 10,000 and 1, whatever. And then I have my map range uh, from 0 to 10,000, that is the distance. And then I have a normalization here. And then I put the outrange 1, as in that's full volume at full distance. Then you have this little at thing. Uh, which is called a raise float to the power. So I think you go power, power float. Yep, you get that. And you get your range. And then you want to, I have another variable here. Um, that's just called height fall of curve. And the reason that's a variable is because I have this clamped between zero to five, which I'll show you why in a minute. Then you have to do some maths here. This was the part that I was a bit confused. For some reason you have to whatever one minus this uh, then becomes the gain that i have in my mixer so um this is just an equation pretty simple and i will show you why it's cool because this green curve is essentially what the you see this number here 1.1 that is what is going to be here this number now it's 0 0.2 so what does that look like we have 0 0.2 that is quite a steep curve you can go all the way steeper to you know, 0 0.1 or if you want to go the other way you can go two three four five and then you get this um, you know reverse logarithmic or exponential whatever um, the scientific word is called so that's a pretty cool thing that I was quite impressed with until my genius work colleague came and said, hey, that's pretty cool, but I have a better way. And what he did was he has a similar thing. So you have your distance here, plug that in, and then you normalize from whatever. And just to mention, this doesn't only have to be distance, right? This can be any variable that you plug in there. Um, which you might also want to have a logarithmic or something curve that's not just so linear. You know, maybe you want some EQ or compression or whatever to, you know, ramp up very fast or very slowly. So, yeah, so what he showed me, um, and his name is Carlos Jimenez, um, he works at Jaeger with me. I'll put a link to his YouTube channel and LinkedIn in my description. He showed me about this Evaluate Wavetable Bank. So yeah, you just type in here, wavetable, yeah, let's do evaluate, wavetable bank, chuck that in there, chuck your input in there. And then once we go to here, let's just make a new one, promote to graph input. And this can be wavetable bank too. That was the example, I'll just delete that. And here we have a, an array or whatever. Um, and what we can do there is create a asset, which I've already done here. It's called a wavetable bank. So you can say wavetable bank. Here we go, select that asset. I already have one here. And what you get here is curve. So in this curve, there's a few things you have to remember. 
uh, I believe the resolution, this is a type of the type of optimization. So how many points you want on your curve uh, and how many points you kind of want the computer to remember. So it doesn't have to do as many calculations or interpolation. It's basically like a res well, it is a resolution, yep. Um, so obviously the smaller the number, the more performance it is, but the higher the number, the more points you get on the graph. So let's just go with the standard kind of like uh, 128, that's probably fine. And um, another thing to remember is this bipolar. Um, bipolar is if you, you have to turn it off if you want to use a um, envelope. Um, and if you turn it on, it will oscillate between, or not oscillate, but the graph will go from one to minus one. So obviously for an envelope, we want one to zero. Um, that's quite important. So we turn that off. And then here we have a whole bunch of curves, which are pretty cool. There's like a whole bunch of like, you can you change some of this stuff, like exponential. This is exactly what I was doing um, with my other uh, formula. However, there is something that happens weird at the end, right? So it kind of drops back to zero when you get to about whatever, 0 0.99. So what you can do is you can do custom and then you can add your points. You know, you can either snap them or not, whatever. Um, and you can just do your custom curve like that. Let's do, what is this? Point, point 0.2 and point 0.5. Yeah, and then you can plug that curve into, um, into here. So here's your wavetable bank. I think that's correct. What else can you do here? Interp oh, you can, there's even interpolation. Interesting. Finding out new stuff all the time. Um, so now let's see what happens when I print to log and get my trigger variable. Oh, there we go. By the way, it's always good just to promote this uh, on play to a trigger, uh, to a variable, because then instead of trying to have to spaghetti your on play everywhere, you can just get this like handy little node and trigger things from all over the place. It helps. Um, so now where is my log? Um, so here, when I hit play, it should print the value. Ah, and the value is, there you see, display weapon share tail 0 0.00. Okay, and if I move my distance parameter, I need to do this. Distance. See, now the numbers change. Um, and if I, I'm just gonna move this over here. So. Yeah. Because of this bank, the fall off is much quicker at the beginning um, and then it slowly fades out. Let's do something a bit more extreme. Like this. Go back to the meta sound, wherever that is. Meta sound. Hit the log again. It's hard to do this on one screen. So output log one. Move a little bit. It's already falling off quite a bit. Move it again. It's already 0.5, right? And my, my thing's still really close. Now it's 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 see how it slowly fades off now because of that graph so yeah just always obviously test with your printer log to see what your values are doing but yeah it's super cool because now you can have you know multiple different distances uh, with different outputs coming to your mixer yeah basically now you have all these different options um, for curves uh, one last thing so again my uh, colleague Carlos he mentioned that he prefers doing, uh, having custom curves like this. And you can also have custom curves, curve asset. And then you just get your attenuation here if you prefer using these. And you can just chuck that into your curve asset here. And that will, you know, do whatever you want it to. Um, add key, let's do this weird thing and see what happens now. It comes like that. So 
yeah, super awesome stuff. Um, I hope it helps. I know I've been looking for things like this for a very long time, and it's super awesome that um, they're actually available in Metasound. I feel like Metasound is improving every single time I use it. It's quite uh, quite amazing. 